Hi, welcome to the Manhattan Associates webcast on how to build a business case for order management. Retailers and wholesalers alike are under constant pressure as shopping evolves. The advent and explosive growth of e-commerce coupled with the escalating demands of the consumer, not to mention new competitive pressures and now the pandemic, all these factors are forever driving organizations to be quicker, to be more efficient and to be able to scale on the fly. Today's session will show you not only how you can respond to our evolving environment, but the rewards you could potentially reap as a result of that investment. Let's welcome Sasha Williams and Rohir Van Dam to take the lead on this discussion. Over to you, Sasha and Rohir. Uh, well, firstly, look, a warm welcome and thank you everyone for joining myself and Roger today. Uh, I'm Sasha Williams, Sales Director for Manhattan here in the UK. And I've got responsibility for our new business sales on our products and services. I've spent probably the last nine years working with retailers and brands, initially in the early days, helping them establish their online e-commerce trading presence. Uh, since then, I've gone on to work with them in terms of helping them to do to deliver omni-channel strategies with a particular focus on order management and data decisioning. Roger. Thank you, Sasha. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining the session today. Uh, my name is Roger Van Dam. I'm an engagement director at Manhattan Associates. I'm responsible for uh, Manhattan's order management solution implementations for our customers. Um, previous experiences in management consulting and fast moving goods, where I've led global transformations and e-commerce implementations for global retailers, manufacturers, and brands. So um, to start off this presentation, um, I want to introduce the uh, value driver tree as the basic framework that we have developed with our customers uh, in helping them with their business case and determining the value they can achieve by implementing an enterprise or a management solution, or as we sometimes call it, OMS. Whilst we use this framework for our own Manhattan Active Omni solution, the approach and principles can be applied to, order, uh, to other order management solutions as well. Uh, the framework starts with the premise that overall goals of any business is to increase shareholder value. From there, we focus on three areas. First, we'll focus on revenue growth. How will an OMS solution enable and support improvements to a retailer's revenue? It's no accident that for most retailers, this is their online sales performance, which continues to grow and outpace store sales. Second, margin growth. Underpinning this growth, can an order management pro improve a retailer's ability to grow or maintain margin? This is an increasingly important area of focus in today's retail market we see. And then third is asset utilization. So how can an OMS help me squeeze every ounce of value from my existing assets? We will share some of the examples of the opportunity an OMS can bring to support this objective. Now let's look at some key focus areas that we have identified. Um, these areas, in our opinion, are the main areas that need to be considered as part of an overall business case. There are other elements uh, that also need to be included, such as change management, for example, which has an important impact on both people, processes, and operations. We will look at each of these focus areas in turn, highlight the importance of the value of each, and also provide you with some of our customers and industry examples that demonstrate what results are possible to achieve. At the end of the presentation, we will provide a list of the top six takeaways that need to be considered and incorporated into an OMS business case. Sasha, over to you to take us through the revenue growth focus areas. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Roger. So to start, for many retailers, um, they're continuing to experience tremendous growth in their online or e-commerce channel. Uh, it's not untypical today for a retailer to have 20% or more of their total revenue now coming from this channel. On the flip side, store sales are normally seen as best, it's flat in terms of performance. So the first area that customers focus on in looking at how they can, is looking at how they can surface all of their available inventory through their e-commerce channel, as this is really their primary growth engine. So look, Today, retailers typically operate using what we call siloed inventory within their DC or warehouse. 
that's specifically inventory set aside for e-commerce sales only. Now, the inventory queue consumers normally see on the website is just a fraction of the available inventory. And as it's only for e-commerce stock, it doesn't include store stock or stock set aside for other sales channels such as marketplaces. So first of all, you need to combine all the stock from all of your sales channels together, online, stores, marketplaces. And retailers can establish a single view of inventory through their e-commerce channel that will help them to maximize availability of products and grow incremental sales further. Now you'll see from the chart that we've seen through our customers adopting this as their first principle that they've been able to achieve between 10 to 40 percent uplift in sales by bringing all of that inventory together. We've also seen, interestingly enough, that where customers are exposing store inventory via their website, a significant percentage of sales are made up through their e-com channel are actually fulfilled by store stock. So now there is an argument that you know store sales may be cannibalized by making inventory available through the online channel, but our customers report that overall it's a very small percentage and it's far outweighed by the uplift in overall online sales. So establishing a single view of inventory and enabling it through a retailer's online or e-commerce channel is really your first priority when building a OMS business case. We can now the, the second area where we typically see retailers focusing is on their buy online, pick up in store proposition, or as we know it here in the UK, really click and collect. Now, click and collect has been available for some years now. And certainly in the early days, we'll see it was seen as a means of competing against digital pure plays such as Amazon by offering speed and convenience to the consumer. Now, by leveraging their store estate, retailers were able to take an online order and offer next day collection from one of their stores. And by not charging for shipping, it's no surprise customers took to this particular proposition. And certainly in the early days, it helped the stores drive incremental sales and incremental footfall. Um, As to George, for example, launched uh, Click and Collect almost 10 years ago and typically sees over 60% or more of their online orders being picked up in store. And in the early days, they were also seeing incremental sales where customers went on to make further purchases. Now, Click and Collect is an accepted online proposition. It's a standard expectation for consumers when interacting with a brand or retailer that has both an e-commerce channel and store presence. But despite the rapid customer acceptance and growth in Click and Collect, the majority of retailers and brands we see today still continue to, de to deliver this service on the basis of using their siloed e-commerce stock within their DC, shipping orders overnight to their stores for customers to collect the next day. Now, whether a retailer utilizes their own delivery fleet, third party couriers, or even a third party partner, there is a significant overhead and cost impact, in particular at the store level. Now, when it comes to implementing an order management system, retailers are now able to provide click and, click and collect capabilities more intelligently by leveraging their store stock in multiple ways. So, a click and collect order can be checked to see, firstly, it can be fulfilled from existing store stock. And by filling the order from store stock, it negates the need to process that inventory in the DC and ship it to the store, whilst allowing the store to achieve an incremental sale. Now, we've seen this approach where retailers can improve and improve the speed from order to fulfillment. And you see click and collect propositions of 60 minutes or even better, such as say at Screwfix or the Entertainer, which are great examples of today's click and collect propositions that deliver what customers expect, that convenience, but also they deliver it in an efficient and cost-effective manage, cost-effective manner by leveraging store stock. So our second focus area, when you're looking at an OMS business case, is to start thinking about how you can leverage your store estate and your store stock. 
and how it can improve your click and collect proposition. Uh, Roger, back to you. Thank you, Sasha. Yeah, that's it. Interesting, interesting couple of facts. Uh, so where we just looked at two major areas uh, on the customer, considering when building their OMS business case, it uh, should be no surprise they are on the revenue side. As consumer expectation, choice and convenience has grown and then the myriad ways they purchase and have their orders fulfilled. Retailers have had to work very hard to keep up. As long as revenue continued to grow, retailers were reluctant but prepared to absorb the additional cost that came with delivering and meeting this customer promise. There had been a long-term recognition, and particularly in today, that there needs to be focus on maintaining and where possible growing margin. As part of any OMS business case, it is important to consider a positive impact uh, an OMS solution can have towards this key metric. By enabling store stock and other channels to achieve single view inventory, retailers can become more nuanced and smarter in the way they approach markdowns, for example. In a traditional store, stock is marked down where it's not moving based on some simple rules and generally with large and increasing discounts. By surfacing, store stock through all of the retailer sales channels and taking a holistic view, markdowns can be carefully and more intelligently managed. The results we see from our customers and industry show retailers are able to decrease store markdowns by about 5%. As retailers embrace an OMS within their operation, they increasingly find strategies and methods that allow them to improve these results. However, it's still at an early stage for many. We also see luxury brands providing a single view of stock globally across their e-commerce, country sites, and stores. This allows them to take an order in one country, locate and ship the product from another country where it makes commercial and business sense, helping them to optimize sales and inventory. An OMS provides the opportunity to become smarter in the way a retailer approaches markdowns that drives a positive impact on overall margins. As e-commerce growth becomes an increasing share of retailers or brands, overall turnover, we see 20% or more, transportation and shipping costs have also grown rapidly. These costs now account as one of the top five costs a retailer faces. Consumer expectations for free shipping and especially free next day shipping means retailers struggle to pass on these costs to the consumer. We see as much as 80% of overall shipping costs are never recovered. And this has a direct and significant impact on overall margin and profitability. We have seen for click and collect that by fulfilling an order from store stock, how this has a direct impact on reducing shipping costs. This can also be extended to shipping orders directly from a store to consumers, which we call ship from store. Rather than ship from the DC, geographically, it can make sense to ship the order from a store that is closer to the consumer and where the cost of shipping is less than from the DC. Alternatively, slow moving stock in a store in one part of the country can be shipped to a customer directly or even to another store where demand is greater, avoiding the need for an item to be marked down. An OMS provides the flexibility and intelligence to support these types of decisions and drive a positive impact on margin and overall profitability. When building your business case, understand how an OMS business can bring the required flexibility and agility into your operations so you are able to meet customer expectations profitably. The final area to focus on is asset utilization. So we spoke earlier about how retailers silo stock to sales channels such as e-commerce stock coming from DC. Um, as the number of sales channels increase by which consumers can purchase from a retailer, it becomes harder to determine what stock and how much of it should be allocated by sales channel. By moving to a single view of all inventory, across all channels, a retailer is better able to manage demand dynamically by making more informed and data-led decisions. By optimizing stock level requirements by demand and channel, this flows through the improvements in profitability and cash flow. For consumers visiting a store and finding the item they want is not available within that store, retailers are increasingly focused on save the sale. By having access to all inventory, a store associate is able to locate and offer the consumer a full range of options to fulfill their order. We have seen retailers implement technical solutions in store, such as accessing their e-commerce DC, a stock via a store associate portal on their e-commerce website using an iPad, for example. This type of solution still masks the fact that inventory remains separated 
patching together a number of different systems increases manual processes and workarounds are not scalable or efficient. Also, this tracks from the overall in-store customer, customer experience uh, because your store associate has to engage more with their technology and less with the customer for this. Then on to returns management. Many retailers allow consumers to return products in store. Stock received in store is normally aggregated and sent back to DCs for returns processing before sellable stock finds itself becoming available again. The lead time for an item to come back on sale can be significant for retailers. Returns in particular is a major headache and cost to fashion retailer where return rates in the range of 25 to 40% are not untypical and become a major bottleneck during certain trading periods such as promotions, Black Friday and the Christmas holiday trading. The ability to return an item in store, determine its sellable con condition and add it back into the inventory pool so it becomes available across all sales channels immediately is of a significant value. As part of your OMS business case, see the opportunity to utilize your store estate assets more fully to drive lower cost and improved customer experience. We have seen the impact COVID-19 has had on the retail sector with non-essential retailers having to close stores, scrambling to extend their e-commerce operations capabilities to, and find ways of moving stock back from their stores to their DCs or partners. Some essential retailers have had, the, have had to adapt their operations rapidly. For example, Majestic Wine closed its stores for walk-in customers, but the staff in store remained to take telephone and email orders and fulfill those orders from store stock with local deliveries. They're also able to prioritize customers' order depending on the personal situation. And OMS provides the opportunity for organizations to become far more agile and flexibly, and we are see our customers, and we see our customers achieving this in a number of ways. First, chip from store. Using an OMS, retailers can continue to drive sales from stock, which is not even on the shop floor. Stores that have fragmented stock that is cleared away for new stock coming in can make the fragmented stock available via the e-commerce channel. This stock is then shipped to the, from back of house by the store to fulfill online orders, reducing the need to consolidate, send it back to the DC. Second, improve store, improve store utilization. For a retailer, as a quieter, less profitable store, they can make a greater contribution by reconfigured to asset, assist in online fulfillment. This can help better justify a physical presence in lower footfall locations and have a positive impact on regional online sales. And then right sizing. For some retailers where e-commerce growth is expanding rapidly, this is making them reevaluate their operational requirements. By reconfiguring their operations and looking at how to adapt and leverage their store estate, Retailers find strategies that optimize their DC requirements with their store estate, helping to optimize any capital expenditure. To achieve these types of capabilities also require a change in mindset when it comes to investigating in technology, investing in technology. The strategic choice today is to invest in cloud-based microservices technology. This approach ensures as a, a retailer, you have access to continuous updates and new functionality that you can take advantage of quickly to support and drive your business in new ways. Back to you, Sasha. Thank you, Roger. So uh, as you build your business case, um, it is important to think strategically. And the reason we say that is that you should be viewing the investment in an OMS as being just as important and core to your business as when you first invested in your ERP solution. So by default, your choice of OMS technology is a key one. And this slide really outlines the importance of selecting an OMS that is fundamentally based around cloud native and microservices. Now, when we speak, talk about cloud native, what we mean is an OMS application that is architected and specifically built for the cloud not for what we call traditional fixed high cost infrastructures that are common in a lot of retailers today. When it comes to microservices, this is a modern architecture that really supports faster innovation and new capabilities. And we've already seen through the examples previously mentioned 
our fulfillment capabilities are expanding and customer expectations also. Now, the value of microservices is fundamentally, it is always up to date. It's essentially versionless. There are no need to do any major upgrades uh, and the system is always available with new functionality being added either on a monthly or even quarterly basis. Flexibility. A microservices solution is much easier to maintain, sustain and will scale compared to traditional systems. Uh, we have examples of uh, retailers really struggling during the pandemic uh, with their e-commerce sites to keep pace with demand, for example. Agility. You can develop and implement new functionality very quickly and very, very efficiently compared to traditional systems. And then perhaps the most important one is scalability. It is far easier to scale uh, applications on demand. You know, old technology sol solutions that you know require you to say stand up app servers or uh, app servers, for example, are really now consigned to history. Microservices by using containerization really allows you to deploy as many new instances of their services as needed. So if you see a problem, for instance, customers struggling to log into their accounts, for instance, it's very easy to enable what we would call the login microservice to, to, to increase that so it's capable of handling the volume. I think also it's important to point out that whilst your choice of OMS technology is key, it also needs to take into account the choice of partner. A partner that works with you to provide not just the technology, technological solutions, but the innovation that's needed in your business to meet current and future requirements. For many retailers, they don't really have the resources to attract the talent that's needed to support their innovation and ambitions. So your choice of partner becomes very critical today. So view the selection of an OMS as an important one now to your business as when you first invested in an ERP solution and also recognize the importance that selecting the right partner to collaborate with and one that you can establish an innovation partnership with over time. So to sort of just provide some highlights or to support why you need a strategic OMS solution, here are some examples that we've drawn from our customers. Um, COVID-19, well look, we've all seen how COVID-19 has affected retailers and how retailers have had to adapt rapidly and in many cases have been caught out completely. So for example, one of our customers, our retail customers, and I would say non-essential, realizing the situation with COVID-19 meant that stores were having to be close to walking customers, they were able to convert their store operations within six days to offer a new, new proposition, pick up from curb offer. Cur customers were able to order online, with orders fulfilled from store. Customers would drive up to the store and collect their order at the curbside. Now, te the technology was the key enabler for this new style of proposition to be created and to be put into operation in days. And this is what we mean by strategic choice of OMS. And we've also seen customers during COVID-19 enjoying peak trading, when traditionally this would be a quiet period for them. You know, some of them have experienced volumes, you know, typical of what they would get during a Black Friday period. So for them, what was the norm is now no longer the norm. Yet the OMS and systems they have, being based on modern architecture and modern technology, are able to automatically scale to meet this peak in demand without impacting customers. We've seen the impact of that where customers are working with older technology uh, where, for instance, a leading DIY chain here in the UK uh, was overwhelmed on its e-commerce site with a number of visitors and was having to employ queuing processes online as customers had to wait their turn to access the website before they could pay, place their order. So these are just two examples that illustrate the value and importance in choice of OMS, quite topical for our times at the moment, and why you need to think from a strategic point of view.
Um, it's also important to highlight that as you build an OMS business case, you do need to consider the uplift and impact in customer experience that an OMS can provide. An OMS is not purely about order orchestration. It's not really a tactical solution to fix a specific requirement either, but it has to support other business needs and requirements. And by that, we've got a couple of other examples here taken from our customers where they have introduced what we call queue busting technology. Uh, we all know the frustrations when you're in store of uh, having selected something and then having to join a queue, particularly at the weekend, to pay for your purchase at the till. Now, there are solutions available where you can use a mobile POS, iPad or smartphone, where a store associate on the floor can check out a customer without the customer having to queue at a conventional checkout. In fact, if an associate is interacting with you as a customer, the ability to then seamlessly check you out is really one that drives an improved customer experience. So the question is really to ask yourself is, how easy is that for me to do today with the technology that I have? And the second example is really single view of customer. So retailers are sort of increasingly moving towards bringing a single view of customer together by moving towards what we call clienteling applications, which were really seen in the premium, uh, premium luxury arena, but are now beginning to come down into the mainstream. And a clienteling application is enabling a store associate really to engage with a customer more fully. So enabled by an OMS, an associate can see clearly the customer's most recent buying history. They can also see, if necessary, their browsing activity. And it just means that as they interact with that customer, that engagement experience becomes much more relevant for the customer. Again, you know, when you think about it, how much do your store associates know about your customer when they are in your store? So these examples just illustrate that when building an OMS business case, you need to be mindful of how will this OMS support and underpin future business and customer application needs, whether we know them what they are likely to be today or what they could be potentially in the future. In the future. Okay. So uh, here, here are our six uh, sort of top takeaways for you to help build your business case. Uh, first one, please establish a single view of inventory through your online channel, not silo by channel. Uh, when we say channel, at sales channels such as e-commerce, stores and marketplaces. Step two, apart from making your store stock available online, really look at how you could fulfill orders from store stock wherever possible and where that makes sense in terms of click and collect. Third one, concentrate on how an OMS can improve your ability to manage markdowns. As you now have a single view across all your channels, you can start now to move towards what we call data-driven decisions that are more nuanced, which will help drive and improve margins. Step four, factor in how an OMS can reduce shipping and transportation costs. We talked about these being now one of the top five costs retailers face. So for fillings from store stock or shipping from store, shipping from store or returning to store so you can put stock back into inventory, these become really, really important parts of the business case. Uh, step five, see how an OMS can provide the agility and flexibility for you to better manage inventory. So slow moving items in a store may be fast moving in another. Returns via a store that can be checked and confirmed back into the overall inventory pool rather than sent back to the DC and incur additional processing. Again, these, these, these things become very, very important in terms of margin. And then step six, review how an OMS can help leverage existing assets. You know, do you need another DC? Do you need to expand your DC? Do you need a third party partner? Or can you actually now see your stores as assets that can underpin the activities in a DC? So a final note, recognize that a successful OMS business case is not just achieved through technology. Um, we talked about senior executive sponsorship and commitment across functions as an imperative. 
please recognize plan and account for the impact of change on your people processes and operations think think of an oms as made up of multiple implementations rather than one grandiose large single project and also that this will be something that's going to be an ongoing requirement within your business your oms business case in our view should be based on a minimum three-year term in terms of a tco or roi basis if anybody asks you to achieve a faster or quicker return uh, then you should be extremely skeptical um, expect payback on your investment to begin probably in the first 12 months you should aim for and there are probably three areas that we think you should have as part of your business case first new profit by putting it in an oms how can i actually you know achieve additional growth in sales and profitability two savings from improved operations an oms is an opportunity to really understand how you can make those operational improvements in your business and start to recover margin that's being lost at the moment and then i think the third one which seldom gets mentioned is avoided costs you can probably historically look at some of the investments you've been making as your e-commerce business has grown but by moving to a much more modern SaaS based solution built on modern technology you can start to achieve not only savings now but into the future because it removes the needs for additional cost or additional investment into your existing legacy systems and tools or various tactical solutions so that's it as i say from myself and roger uh, we hope you found the webinar helpful thank you sasha and rohir and thank you to our viewers for listening in Manhattan Associates is here to support you and your business, so please get in touch if you would like to discuss the value enterprise order management could bring to your business. You can contact Sasha or Rohir directly using the credentials on screen, or alternatively, drop us a note to uk at manh.com or visit our website on manh.co.uk. Hope to see you all again soon. Mm -hmm.